Cognitive levels is a term that's been around for many years in education. And it's a term that we all use, yet I don't know whether everyone really understands what it means. Now, cognitive levels or levels of cognition are levels of thinking. How well learners can process information, how much understanding they have of facts, and how deep their understanding actually is. This is derived from the word cognition. And cognition means to gain knowledge, but not only to gain the knowledge, to be able to comprehend, show understanding, and be able to reason and make judgment calls on this knowledge that the learner or person has gained. What we need to remember as teachers is, are we applying this in our teaching every day? Are we developing these skills of the learners to be able to make judgment calls? Are we developing these skills in the way we teach and even more so in the way we assess? And we can't expect the learners to answer high order questions in the exam papers and test papers if we haven't actually developed these skills in the classroom. We need to ensure that our teaching develops opportunities or allows for opportunities for learners to debate, to question, to discuss. These are the sort of skills that our learners need to learn and develop from a young age. And if it's not developed from a young age, they struggle later. Now, there are many predetermined concepts and theories that can be used to determine levels of cognitive ability. And these are all based on the same principle. The principle that we start off with low order thinking. From that, we use that and build on it to get your more middle order thinking. And then from there, you develop your higher order thinking. Now, your lowest order of thinking is really just gaining knowledge and facts. Once we have the knowledge, we're then able to use it and show understanding. And that would be your middle order thinking, where learners are able to reason using the knowledge that they have. And then, of course, your highest order thinking is making judgment calls and also being able to reflect on your own thoughts and being able to express them and transfer them to other people. Now, probably the most popular and most well-known taxonomy is Bloom's taxonomy. And Bloom's taxonomy is based on six cognitive levels. And in some cases, you'll see there are other cognitive levels that have been added. But for, for mostly, we use the six cognitive levels. And they range from lower order thinking to higher order thinking skills. It's very heavily based on verbs and looks at the level at which we require the learners to think. So the bottom, your low order thinking, starts with remembering. Then you develop understanding. Once you've developed the understanding, you're able to apply. Then you're able to analyze, synthesize, and the highest level is evaluate. And if you think of that metacognition, that is what evaluation is about. You're really reflecting on your own thoughts, you're making judgment calls, and you're able to tell other people about it. Now, Bloom's taxonomy is best used for assessing interpretation and obviously levels of thinking. Barrett's taxonomy was developed to describe and assess the different levels of reading comprehension. It consists of five different levels of reading comprehension and can be easily adapted for assessing listening, speaking, and writing. And it's particularly useful when teaching and assessing languages and literacy. So the lowest level is where learners are able to recognize and recall things like main ideas. They might even be able to look at some comparisons, sequence, and so on. Once they've got past that level, they're able to reorganize ideas and concepts. This might be through classifying, summarizing, and outlining. The next level is deducing or concluding from, an, from evidence where they're given maybe a main idea, or they're asked to predict something, or they're asked to compare things, or they look at cause and effect relationships. Evaluation where they're able to form an opinion or conclusion of something or about something. And then, of course, the highest level is the appreciation level, where they're able to respond using emotions, they're able to be imaginative and creative. Barrett's taxonomy is best used for assessing reading and comprehension. Now, the third taxonomy that I'd like to look at 
is one that's not very popular and well known. It's known as the SOLO taxonomy, the Structured Observed Learning Outcomes. And it was developed by Biggs and Colas and uses five levels to describe learners' understanding of a subject. It's ideally used for learners when evaluating skills and practical competencies. And it's really suitable for younger learners because it isn't based on verbs, which often the younger learners aren't able to understand. Now, once again, it's based on those three levels of thinking. Your lowest level, or your first level, is once again based on facts. It's your pre-structural, where learners are actually able to identify unconnected aspects of a concept or skill. So they just know the facts. They're not necessarily able to make any connections. The unistructural is where they can make simple and obvious connections. So they might be able to connect two basic facts together. The next level is where the skills really come in. They need to make enough connections to be able to carry out the skill or complete the concept. The relational, they can make all the necessary connections and show an understanding of the skill or the concept and how it relates to the environment or other concepts and skills. And then what we call the extended abstract, which is obviously your highest order thinking, is where the learners can make connections within the context as well as connections with other contexts and situations. And this is where the emotion comes in and their own interpretation comes in. The solo taxonomy is best used for evaluation of skills and ability. So there you have three totally different taxonomies, but all based on the same concept that we have low order, middle order and high order thinking. This is a nice summary that just shows you the different theories and then the most appropriate use for them. Again, saying that Bloom's taxonomy is best for interpretation and looking at the level of thinking. Barrett's, very appropriate for reading and comprehension. And Solo, taxonomy, very much for skills and looking at the learner's ability. And then there are practical examples of where you can use them. I think the most important thing for us to remember as teachers is when we are applying these cognitive levels, we need to make sure that we're applying them in both our teaching and in our assessing. If we want our learners to be able to think for themselves and develop these skills, we need to use them in our teaching every single day.